Morgan, everyone. My name is Ron Flights, and welcome to Faith in Business. On this program, we speak with people in all facets of the business world, from throughout Middle Tennessee, to see how they share their faith in their businesses. As we all know, sharing our faith with friends can be challenging at times, but sharing in our business community can be more challenging, sometimes even career adjusting, and yet extremely rewarding. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with James German. James is a local financial advisor who is also a member of the Catholic Business League Career Transition Team, helping fellow Catholics seeking employment or possibly stronger employment opportunities among fellow Catholic Christians in the area. James, it's truly a, a pleasure to have you here in the studio with us today. I'm looking forward to, I know we have a program coming up on power networking in the near future, and I'm yeah, looking for forward me, to participating. Delighted to have you. Um, James is very involved with the Catholic Business League and at the same time is pretty much in charge of the power transition team, power networking transition team, I should say. Well, it takes a village sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, one, one of the things we wanted to do is learn a little bit about James, and then sure. he's going to share, into, share with us some of the other aspects of, uh, of what they do on, on that, uh, that transition network. Is that a fair career, way career of putting transition it? transition team. Okay, well, mm -hmm. eventually I'm going to get this right. We do power networking, so right. We, we've created our own, uh, our own language. That's great. Well, tell us a little bit about you. Sure. So uh, I have, uh, I'll start with uh, what is most important to me, if it, if it always possible. Sure. Um, I am uh, married to a beautiful wife and two lovely sons, a two-year-old and four months and a four-month-old. So congratulations. Uh, thank you. They, they keep me busy and they were, they were both born within three days of each other. So um, it's always fun in the German household. Yeah, oh, and I bet. When I say fun, I mean exciting <laughs> and very, very little sleep. So, yeah. um, hopefully, the darks under my eyes yeah. don't uh, don't limit me in this conversation. Understood. But, um, although my wife sleeps far less than I, uh, so so we that that's that's our household and and, and, mm -hmm. and a dog. Um, I moved to Nashville originally in two thousand six. Okay, um, and. Um, spent some time away and then came back. I, I feel like this city has been really, really good to me. It's been a fantastic place to live. Mm -hmm. um, I have lived in various places before in my life. Um, spent various time as a formative, my formative years were in the Northeast. I didn't really like that. Once I was they able have to move white away. stuff up there that <laughs> every year. <laughs> well, I did live in the upper Midwest for years. So yeah. um, that lot more of that, uh, more of the friendliness factor mm -hmm. that I really embraced here um, and uh, really, really enjoyed Nashville and um, seen a lot of changes as we all have. Oh, uh, yeah. To the area. So uh, but I've, I've ever since I've been here. I've been part of the cathedral, the incarnation that's been my parish. Mm -hmm. um, although we did relocate recently uh, to the 12th South area of Nashville and um, got in, we've been a little enticed with Christ the King. Uh, okay. They have some outdoor masses. Uh -huh. So that's been nice to go to, um, especially with uh, a pandemic and, and two little mm -hmm. ones that we've been trying to kind of keep away from others. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Both great parishes. Great places. So um, I'm currently a, a parishioner of Cathedral of the Incarnation. We'll see where life takes us, but um, mm -hmm. we, we've we really enjoyed um, the, the area and uh, very much enjoy, you know, working with my, my clients and working with CBL and getting to know more and more people. So it's been a very ever-changing um, mm -hmm impressive place to live and yeah, don't plan on ever moving away that yeah it, it is lovely here where it originally was home so as a as a child i grew up on the shore in new jersey mm -hmm. and um outside of the italian food and family <laughs> um that's about all i miss yeah <laughs> um from the area uh very short you know if you they love you or they hate you yep. and you know it right away yeah, so. there's not too many gray lines there correct uh so i've outside of my love for the New York Yankees, outside of that, everything else has uh, um, basically been pushed away. <laughs> and I don't don't carry very much of that as a backdrop now. Uh, are you involved with any sports or anything? I'm only five foot six, so I'm not that great at a lot of sports. I did play some tennis. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's basically it. I tried to play some baseball and basketball, but 
quickly found. By you and I are on the same team, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> found that, that was not uh, my, part, my my forte. However, I've loved watching sports, so I'm a college mm-hmm. football fanatic. Um, my passion, one of the passions in my life, uh, is to try to get to every Division One home football game once. That's 130 teams. Yeah, oh boy. Uh, I did take my oldest to one uh, a year and a half ago last uh-huh. year with the pandemic. Really couldn't get to college football games, so right. we do have one or two on the docket this year. So oh, that's we're looking great. Forward to it, and that'll be interesting with two little ones. But it's a great opportunity and excuse to travel the country. Oh, I bet so. Yeah, it. Uh, uh, I actually know a, a person who's been to a lot of the major league baseball parks. That's yeah. more. Uh, that's more doable. Yeah, it, it, obviously. Yeah, because yeah, uh, you're talking 130. 130. Yeah, yeah that's plus to some faraway places that are a little bit hard to get to. Absolutely. But it makes for great trips and, mm-hmm. and really, really neat things. You have a great memory at almost every one of those places. I've been to 49. Oh, uh, that's marvelous. Yeah. I've gotten, I've gotten a pretty decent chunk. Although when a school uh, relocates within that same, let's call it, you know, campus area, or they go from a pro stadium to a college, that means I have to start over. So I've got to cut it off. So, <laughs> you know, maybe another excuse to go visit some of those places, but some of them you might not want to go back to. <laughs> right. It's not as easy to get to. No, I certainly understand that. Well, and, um, and of course, you, you are a financial advisor, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm sure more and more people are turning to, to people like yourself these days. It's, a, it's an interesting environment always, um, but the crystal ball is always foggy. We uh, don't provide answers. We provide solutions to goals. Mm-hmm. And that's really what people, I think, come to us for. Now, the Catholic component of that and the religious component of that is really, really important because um, what I look at myself in the mirror and do every single morning is make sure that I'm doing the right thing for the people that I work with Mm -hmm. Uh, more so than just industry regulations, but religious regulations. Cause at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. the big man upstairs is who we do answer to. And I need to be able to look myself in the mirror in that capacity. So the most important thing possible is making sure that I'm in congruence Mm -hmm. with my faith. That's great. And and it can be challenging. Sure. It works. You know, I mean, especially, you know, it's one thing to to try and be as close as you can with the fellow people that you work with. Mm -hmm. But then you also have the customers out there. And um, sometimes you 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 have the opportunity to to interact religiously, you know, with with people. Sure. Um, And I don't know. Is that something that comes in more or less, you know, in. (laughs) I understand that everyone has different backgrounds, um, so we're always respectful of that in every capacity. Um, however, when provided an opportunity mm-hmm. that that door is opened by our clients, I will help walk through that door. Yeah, yeah. If, that's, that, means, if that makes any sense. Oh, it absolutely makes all the sense in the world because, you know, you, you never know. You know, even I'm sure even a long-term client, sure. you know, might have a surprise for you if you open that door. It's possible. I think I, I have a pretty good understanding yeah. where that is from a religious affiliation standpoint, but I also know that some things can surprise. And mm-hmm. sometimes, um, you know, I bite my bite my tongue here and there when appropriate. Mm-hmm. No, no, I completely understand that. Um, are there any super experiences in your career that that, you know, really stand out as far as things that you may have helped people with or that's a great question um it's it's pretty wide open and that's a good uh, here's my thought uh to answer that question is best Mm -hmm. and most appropriate within the time allotted for Mm -hmm. for our time today because that could probably become a 45 minute conversation (laughs) okay understood Um, what i found in the course of my career is that uh, I haven't always been in this industry. Um, There was a a period of time where I was in a totally separate industry post-college. I went to Mm -hmm. Indiana University. I love my alma mater. Um, Still am frustrated that they didn't win a national championship game for men's soccer last night, but that's a different story. (laughs) Um, And what I found is that my first career, um, switching out of that, that was in um, food service sales up in Chicago. Uh I lived there for a few years. And, And I found that there's many times that you're not in control and we're, we're never truly in control. We, we try to have as much control as possible with when, whatever we're allotted to. And I think that's what, do, that's what God really allows us to do is say, I'm really in control, but I'm going to afford you the opportunity to create as much control as you possibly can mm-hmm. being in the, with, with what I've blessed you with. Um, and I found that 
I've had many of those times where I've been in control about making decisions in my career. But I've also found there's been several situations where I've been laid off because mm-hmm. of, I remember that industry was one. Um, I remember right. in 2001 when I was in a totally different role in my, in my industry um, that that was laid off again. Um, and then a third time. Um, which was in the 2008 situation before I got into my financial advising career uh-huh. when I was on the institutional side of the business. And what it's found, what it's created more for me is an opportunity to understand that God will always humble you. And that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. I find, and I really hope to teach my boys, is that when something happens to you that's negative, you really hope that, that how you respond to it is far more important than what happens to you. Absolutely. And and I think we all know that. What I find, and I'm sure we're going to get into this in a little bit, is through the career transition team and through Catholic Business League, is that when someone has shared that they've been let go, it's a very big hit to their ego. It's it's very, Mm -hmm. very... I I don't feel like they're telling that they lost their job and, okay, I still need income from somewhere else and some drive and passion. Right. It almost feels like they're talking from a gut punch. That's a great point. And yeah. why did I bring this up when you asked if you're any maybe success stories or, sure. or ideas that you found in your career? I can very much relate to that. And I think coming from a position of empathy, because you have experience in that particular empathy, provides more credibility, maybe mm-hmm. from their standpoint, but from my standpoint, putting myself in their shoes and being able to understand where they're coming from, and then hopefully figuring out ways that I can make one little touch and And it'd be great if i said here's a career here's your job right right everyone wants that but that's not necessarily what anyone that you connect with can provide what's just as important i think is maybe having a few different people help just shift and guide and adjust you back towards that particular path Mm -hmm. and that would be where I found a little bit more of that, um, let's call it success in that capacity where I've been able to find uh, a little bit more of that direction. And then, you, and then uh, connect those people with others that might be able to be more direct in that path achievement. Well, you brought up a point there too, James, that, that, that I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. The fact that you've been out there, you've, you've been in the workforce, and you've been, you've been kicked in the tummy. Mm-hmm. you know, uh, several times. Mm-hmm. And, and that is a compassion that you can't buy. I mean, you know, to know what that feeling's like, and, and I'm sure that you deal at times with some people that have never had that happen and may be a, talking with people who have been in, in, in a particular position for 30 plus years, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, gosh, you know, I, I started working for these folks right out of college, and, uh, you know, I never worked at a fast food restaurant or anything else. I just went right to this. And now all of a sudden, what am I going to do? So that is, you're sharing some there about your, your uh, business involvement with the, the uh, I'm going to mess this up. I do it every <laughs> time. The Business League and the Career yeah. Transition Team. And the team. Career Transition Team. Yes. yes it, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm. A little feeble-minded at some times, uh, but uh, it's a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but now, tell us about how you got involved with that. Maybe how you got involved first of all with the Catholic Business League. Yeah, I think the the Catholic Business League story for me is uh, far more impactful when I tell others. I, I believe, mm-hmm. and that's only because um, as I I'm at the time that I joined. So this is now. It's a little over two years ago, so it hasn't been forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and what my wife and I found, and this is just as my first or my, my first child was born and just before that and, and then just after, is I said, my time is going to be a lot more limited. And I know that inherently, but I haven't seen it yet, but I know it's going to be a lot more limited. And now I have to figure out with all these things that are competing for my time, work and clients and friends and family how am i going to stay involved in the church Mm -hmm. i I can go on occasion and then leave or hopefully be there weekly but i is it really being involved or am i going there and then leaving and i don't talk to anyone i thought what 
organizations can I be part of? And what really hit me between the eyes, and I'll very much attribute this to some uh, inner self-talk, but just as importantly, a conversation that I had with my wife, which in retrospect was just an aside conversation that we could have had over dinner. I don't remember exactly where we had it. Mm -hmm. Some of the best. (laughs) Yeah, it can be. And some of the most impactful in a very quiet, subtle way. Right. And it was, honey, is it going to be odd for me to go to a religious organization and share what I do because is that using God or using faith to work with new people that I don't know? Mm -hmm. And then she said, it's called the Catholic business league, right? I said, yeah, Ah. yeah, yeah, I, I, I guess that is. So why are all the other people there? Well, they're probably okay with talking about business as well. Mm-hmm. So it, it got me thinking, wow, that's that's a little bit more powerful. And maybe it's worth going to and seeing what it looks like. So on my first meeting, I remember it like yesterday, and I don't have always the greatest memory about everything. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I definitely remember this, is that I felt so out of place and so alone when I walked in. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know anyone that had been part of this organization. I'd heard about it. I knew that it was at the cathedral and in the Fleming Center right. where they held the meetings. And I said, well, sometimes you just have to push yourself out there. You just have to go take that. And it's not a real big risk. No one would have noticed me. Mm-hmm. It's your own self-talk. Right. Yeah, you're, what, what you're thinking. Yeah, it's your own self-talk again. I said, what if I just start talking with people? I have nothing to lose. I have only anything to gain. And... Then I started thinking, okay, I went to that meeting and nothing bad happened to me. And then, <laughs> that's great. And so I went back to another and I said, okay, interesting speaker and got to, and, and a lot of the folks seemed to really know each other and everyone was welcoming. And I had a couple of people come up and talk to me and that made me feel good because mm-hmm. they had nothing, they had no reason to do that. And, um, and then I said, you know what, I, I think I'm going to join this. When you join an organization and you're not involved the chance to fall off and to let it become something that slowly passes in the night is very high. Yeah. I said, if I'm going to be involved in an organization, being that my time is as limited as it is, I want to be involved. I said, what could I be involved with? So uh, I tend to be a driver personality. So I said, all right, I'm (laughs) going to work through the different committees and say that, no, no, maybe, yes, possibly. Mm -hmm. And started reaching out a little bit towards who are the folks that either head those committees or do a little bit of a deeper look into what things are involved. And I found that the career transition team would be, huh, well, I have clients all the time that retire. I have clients all the time that are laid off. Mm -hmm. I've been laid off in the past. I said, this, I could, this could speak to me. I wonder what it's in, what it's involving. And I spoke with uh, the prior career transition team leader and, um, and Bob Winucci has done a great job with kind of helping me uh, understand about what that ministry within a ministry is, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of what we call it. Yeah, really. and it is. Uh, and, 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 and what would I be? Well, I'd be on the team. And that's really all this is, mm-hmm. right? It's one big, large team. And I thought, okay, that's, a, that's being on the team. What might my role be? And it's talking with those that are seeking either expressly, explicitly, or more covertly, they're fully employed or they're in a sales capacity, mm-hmm. but they don't want their employer to know that they're potentially looking around. But I'm open to talking to people. They, they, they've come to me or, or to our team sure. for that reason. Mm-hmm. And there were four of us. And I said, oh, okay, that's, that's manageable. I can have kind of a team within a team. I get to know the other three people pretty well. And then we have a mission and we have a mm-hmm. purpose. And as a driver personality, almost everybody knows that you have to have a, a purpose. Right. right. <laughs> whenever we're setting goals, we're defining yep. purpose and then measuring that, that goal for that purpose. So it got me thinking this is maybe what was more right. It was a fit. And then the congruence happened. And that congruence made such a big difference in terms of saying, all right, I want to embrace this. Now, could I do a better job? I'm always open to suggestions. I'm sure I could do a better job. And with more time, like anything else, the more that you dedicate towards something, the better off you can be. Um, I found that now that becomes something that I feel strongly about within the Catholic Business League mm-hmm. and hopefully something that we can help as many people as possible, provided the guidelines of what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, it's... Uh uh, when I first heard about it, I, I, I was just amazed. And as I mentioned to you before, um, there was a time in, in my life, not that long ago, mm-hmm. where 
if I had known it was available, you know, and it, it probably wasn't at that particular point in time, boy, I mean, going to, going to some some organization that is religious based, especially in my religion, uh, to to go get some answers and 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 find out what you know what might be available around here. Mm-hmm. That just is an immeasurable ministry. I mean, there's just so many advantages for for that for anybody out there, let alone somebody who's sitting there and and, and maybe strong in their religion uh, and thinking, as you mentioned before, you got kicked in the gut here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where do I turn to? Yeah. Because there'd be a. It's easy to turn over here, go to the classifieds or the internet, whatever in the world it is, but. Do you necessarily have the, the the trust in who you're talking to? And right. and uh, I, I just think this is a great ministry that you are you're working with there. Um, so you have this program, and it runs once a month. It's the third Thursday of every month from nine to eleven. Um, it has become virtual. It was in person. Uh, the number of attendees are open. It typically works best when there's a more manageable number for everyone to round robin, go and describe what it is they're there for. Mm -hmm. And I always like to define purpose. So even at the beginning of each session, I mention that. And then we go around and I say, tell me a little bit about who you are, what's your parish, maybe Mm -hmm. something interesting about yourself, and, and then why you're here. Because sometimes people come to the power networking events. So this is, although the career transitions team tries to do so much more, i.e. Um, whatever is affordable from a time standpoint with ourselves, right. the other three of mm-hmm. us that sure. are on our team, and then um, the people that are looking to you know get to know more about us or vice versa right. so that right. we can help them more. So that's whether it's over a coffee or, or, or after work, a happy hour, whatever it might be, whatever the, whatever the time frame works, or even sometimes a phone call or an email. Uh, we're trying to be able to figure out how to connect with them. And then that is very much part of what career transition team is doing more and above, over and above mm-hmm. the, the the power networking sessions. But to define your point and answer that question directly, the power networking from 9 to 11 allows us to have a guest networker. And I mm-hmm. use the air quotes because uh-huh. we don't really know how to best define them yet. Right, so, right. Uh, maybe it will always be the guest networker. Mm-hmm. But it's usually someone that's pretty well connected in the Nashville land area mm-hmm. from an employment standpoint and, and from a connection standpoint. Maybe they're part of a lot of different uh, organizations uh, or they've had a long history, maybe deep roots potentially in the Nashville land area. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be an ex-officio. It could be um, someone that's started a company. It could be someone that's a recruiter. We've had a variety of different people over over the course of time. And again, since I've only been doing this for about a year and a half, um, the only month we miss is December because it usually runs right around Christmas time. Right. Uh, but outside of that, we do it 11 months of the mm-hmm. year, January through November. And whoever that person is, is there to share a little bit about their background and then also to listen to those that are on the call and figure out what it is that they're interested in and help them towards that end. Sometimes someone's there to pay it forward. Mm-hmm. You know what? I heard about this. I'm just interested in being involved in the Catholic Business League, and I thought I might be able to help those that are here, uh, even though I'm not the the guest. Just right. Be able to help them towards that end. Some people have no idea what they're jumping in for. Mm-hmm. They're, they're there because they think, oh, this is a great way to advertise my business. Am I going to tell them they should not be on there? No, it's not necessarily the most effective place because now they're in a smaller group. Exactly. Uh, for folks that are. So I think the key becomes is intentionality and, and understanding what that role might be. So hopefully those folks that are there, even for that reason, might take that hat on off and put on a different hat. Uh, yeah. Because you are helping others in that capacity. So if I wanted to participate in, in, in your power networking here, mm-hmm. how do I get involved do I have to join the CBL? It's ideal to join CBL, um, mostly because there's a, uh, well, and this is not me advertising for CBL mm-hmm. only. Uh, here's what I'll say. The CBL membership fee is very, very reasonable. If you are a, someone in transition, it's one quarter of the price. So, Oh, that's nothing. I, I understand that times are tough financially. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've worked with a lot of folks in various capacities. Right. $25 for an entire year is probably not a oh, lot of stretch. No, no, no. Maybe a sacrifice not going to Subway a couple right. times. During the week. <laughs> exactly. Um, but but I think that's a pretty realistic expectation. And then you join and then you are 
afforded hopefully the opportunity to have uh, a list of folks that you might be able to connect with through through our team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that 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 expands hopefully a lot in the way of opportunity for for many. So the answer to that question primarily has to do, do you have to be part of CBL to, to join to join our power networking for a session? No, I think maybe if you've done it once and you've kind of want to come back again, mm-hmm. it probably helps because then what we do is from those sessions, um, I will look with the other team members on the career transition team and we'll kind of assign, um, let's call them guardians or guidance counselors, mm-hmm. uh, transitioners, however we want to help them in that path and check in. Are you still looking? Right. That's where we take it to the next step of a coffee or a happy hour or a meeting, whatever it might be. Okay. That's marvelous. So the best way then would be maybe to look on the internet to, to see, was it Catholic Business Catholic, League? CatholicBusinessLeague.org. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great organization. I just joined it myself a few months ago and, uh, um, I must admit, I, I, I was blown away on my first meeting and uh, wish I had joined it earlier. No question about that. Well, anyhow, uh, we are just a, a, I really want to thank James for taking the time to come in here and speak with us today and sharing the power networking story and, and, and your own life. Uh, you're, you're a very good religious person, and I'm sure that everybody who does business with you understands and knows that as well. I hope to. Please join us next week when Faith in Business will take a journey with another person in business who will also share how they keep Christ-centered in their career as well as home life. In the meantime, please remember to visit the parish of your choice this weekend. Our priests are welcoming us back, and let's not let them down. My name is Ron Flights. James German is our guest today, and we both thank you for sharing your precious time with us here on Faith and Business. Faith and Business is made possible through the generous donations of our listeners and sponsors and the Diocese of Nashville. Shining the light on our Catholic faith in everyday life, this is Nashville Catholic Radio, 100.5 FM, and streaming at nashvillecr.com.